Those who can, do. Those who can't, talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Now, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people, or can you step up? Mm. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Happy Easter to everybody out there. Uh, it's a holiday. It's uh, getting closer and closer to spring. The weather's warming up. Uh, it was a great day for me yesterday uh, doing some work on the outside. Uh, Going to get some flowers and plants to put in front of the red brick house. Try to beautify this thing. Everybody talks about, oh, the house, you've done such a great job. It's like, well, the outside looks kind of like ass-ass because it's been wintertime and we haven't really been able to do stuff. But we are getting it together and hopefully in the future we'll be able to get some of you guys to be able to come down here and spend some time at the Red Brick House with us. So it is almost um, April. We are about 25 days away, 26 days away from the NFL draft in the Dallas Cowboys. It's all we got. It's all we got is the NFL draft. So um, I can't wait because I've got my man Game Time Brian. I got Chef David Wiley and myself uh, all going to be headed to the draft. We're going to be covering it. We'll be there um, only about three quarters of a mile away from the draft set itself at our hotel uh, within walking distance. We'll be there on Wednesday uh, to give you the sights, the sounds of the city of Detroit, the Motor City, and scope out where we're going to be broadcasting live from the draft. So I hope you guys tune in and uh, follow us. The thing for the Cowboys is they put all their stock in the NFL draft. Last year's draft class um, didn't work out the way they wanted because of injury and kind of change in philosophies of the guys we got. We ended up getting Mozzie Smith as a number one pick, who was a one-technique guy. Dan Quinn wanted to turn him into a three-technique and wanted him to lose weight and become a better pass rusher. So now you're dealing with different body control issues and dealing with almost a different spot and different technique. And the problem in the NFL is, is this. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but with the new collective bargaining agreements, the way things work, and one of the reasons why I think it's actually important to bring in your new players as soon as possible is you only have up to 16 padded practices. And by padded practices... It's not like if you played football back in the day like I did. We had full go practices where you were tackling and taking guys to the ground. You can't tackle in practice. You don't tackle in practice. You're not full speed in practice even though you have pads on. Um, however, that's all you got. And it behooves you to get the people that you're going to have playing for you getting as many reps as possible as close to full speed as you can. And when the Cowboys do things like signing guys in the middle of training camp, it doesn't give you much of a chance to uh, get them up to speed. During the regular season, you can only have one week where you have two padded practices in. Other than that, you have a maximum of 14 padded practices. And you can only have three after week 11. So guys that are injured and coming in, they're not getting a whole lot of reps to get ready for an NFL season. You're not getting a whole lot of time with your teammates to get uh, used to playing with them and things. So um, getting people who are healthy as soon as possible is a key. Now, as we go to the draft, I'm going to be the first one to tell you that I am not like, you know, Vash Lombardi or my man Game Time. I am not the college guy. Just not. I have don't have one the time or the resources because I've got it day job literally i got a day job and everything else and just keeping up with the everyday news and the cowboys is a job in itself so i rely on others so this morning what i did was and one of the things you have to understand about the cowboys philosophy when it comes to uh the draft is they like to get the highest prospect in a position as possible doesn't matter if they 
drafting in the top five or they're drafting, um, you know, later in the round. They want to get as high as possible of a um, prospect as they can. So going into this, now here's what I've done. I've used Jeremiah Trotter's um, mock draft. There's a million mock drafts, and, you know, they're all roughly about the same. You know, there's going to be some variances and so forth. But we're just going to use this one for uh, just entertainment purposes. How about that? So if you're going through with Jeremiah Trotter's draft, mock draft, um, he's got six quarterbacks taken before the Cowboys, um, four offensive tackles, one center, three wide receivers, three edge rushers, one tight end, three cornerbacks, and two defensive tackles. Um, Let's actually go through them. So he's got Clab Williams, of course, quarterback going to the Bears. No secret there. Drake May. Man, we we all wish we had our significant other would look at us the way Dan Quinn looked at Drake May. I mean, it was like, (sighs) ah. Literally, it was like, bro, we have New England supposedly taking Jaden Daniels. Now, here's the thing that's kind of interesting is we've seen so many times where we've had two or three quarterbacks taken in the uh, first couple of picks. Not very many of them have done well. If you'll remember the 2020 draft where it was Trevor Lawrence, um, Trey Lance, and, or excuse me, Zach, Mar- I mean, uh, Zach Williams and Trey Lance. You remember when it was Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston? So there's no guarantee. Now, of course, some people say the Cowboys should draft uh, Michael Penix in the first round, thinking that he'll fall to us. Jeremiah Trotter actually has him out of there uh, much sooner than that. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. Uh, Malik Navers going to uh, the Chargers, Ro- wide receiver. Rome um, Aduzzi to uh, the Giants. Offensive tackle Joe Alt to the Titans. Uh, Dallas Turner, edge rusher, going to the Falcons. Uh, Latu, Latu, I don't know. Uh, edge rusher uh, to the Bears. New York Jets, Brock Boilers, uh, tight end. Only tight end taken off the board early. And tight ends usually don't go in the first round. Uh, quarterback J.J. McCarthy going 11 to Minnesota. Uh, Quentin Michaels going to the Denver Broncos, another quarterback. Um, Talisi Fergo, offensive tackle to the Raiders. Now you're starting to see now offensive tackles go off. New Orleans Saints, um, offensive tackle. Uh, Indianapolis Colts, DB. Um, Seattle Seahawks taking Michael Penitz at 16. So, so much for that idea. Um, Brock Murphy going to Jacksonville Jaguar, uh, Zaire Newton going to offensive tackle to Cincinnati Bengals. So you see the left tackles are going off. Uh, Bo Nix going to the Rams, um, Pittsburgh Steelers, Jackson Powers, the center, uh, Miami Dolphins, edge rusher, um, offensive tackle for the Eagles and Minnesota with the cornerback bringing us to Troy, foot, uh, foot, I can't pronounce You know I'm a name butcher, guys. Um, offensive tackle, actually, O-lineman. Now, here's where it's interesting. He's not listed as an offensive tackle. He's not listed as a guard. He's not listed as a center. He's listed as an offensive lineman. So a couple of things we know about the Cowboys. Stephen Jones, because he played kind of a hybrid defensive back linebacker, a tweener, where he... Basically played both. And you could see that philosophy was going through with the Cowboys when they said, hey, we, we don't have linebackers. We'll use safeties as linebackers. Position flex. It's one of those things that they really and truly love. It's what got them in trouble with Mozzie Smith because they tried to do position flex with him from a one technique to a three technique. So here's where it gets interesting because he is – By definition, the position flex. We've got Tyler Smith, who's been playing lights out on an all-pro level at guard. His rookie year, because he was originally drafted to be Tyron Smith's replacement, he played tackle. 
Now, of course, left tackle is the hardest position on the line. And he played well as a rookie. He's played exceptional as he's gotten older, bigger, and his man bod and everything else at guard. So you can play him either spot. They would rather keep him at guard. And this is where Troy would actually come in and be good for the Cowboys because he can play tackle or he can play guard. So if you get him there and you look and you say, his eyes are going to be too wide open to be able to play tackle, we can play him at guard where he can be kind of protected. Although the problem is, is we don't know who's going to be center. We don't know if it's going to be Brock Hoffman, who will be starting himself new. And you don't necessarily want <coughs> excuse me, two new starters on the offensive line starting together. Let's take a little look. Let's see. I think they got a little bit of a clip in here on him um, working out. Roll his hips and he, he is. Six foot four, three hundred and seventeen pounds. He is big, but he also moves pretty well. Basically, a five five point oh one. He's a real big dude. I believe we're about to get the news. You only get seven padded practices in training camp. No, that's wrong, buddy. It's sixteen. Up to sixteen. Not all teams take him. He's comfortable in that base. Yeah, Very light on his feet. No Look at that. Boom. No Just, real easy. Big and young. Could be. Boom. So quick with that change of direction. The left tackle stance, if you will. Tanu. Yeah, he's comfortable there. Yeah. Comfortable. And how about the pop, the power? Like he's got a heck of a punch. Great personality, all business. A lot of self-confidence. Hmm. You look at him on the field. He's been dominant in these drills. Fuaga apparently has that leadership trait they're looking for as well. Thank you, sir. Look through it. Fatanu, I mean, everything he's done, he's made look easy today. He's got the most dynamic, the most Fatanu. feet of anybody. I mean, this is going to be a clinic. He just, he's got great feet. He, I mean, look at him. He's so agile. He looks like so a big sweet. running back. To just turn on the tape. That's all you need to see, and you'll be fine with him. And this young man star has had himself a day. He's one of the stars of the day because Talisi, Talisi Fuaga, also Oregon State, big time day as well. Right, he's that good. So obviously a lot of questions about where this guy is going to play, Troy Fautanu. There were some people saying, you know, he's going to kick it. I mean, he can he can do it all. Well, Great footwork. Today, they're going to put him in tackle until he proves he can't play tackle. Mm. Right? This is one of those deals where if people are really saying, well, we're thinking about kicking him inside, I think you're doing yourself a disservice mm -hmm. until you play him there and make sure. Bottom line is you're going to find a spot for him to play. He's an easy mover as well. You talk about Fuaga. Watch, watch Fatana. He's at 317 pounds, Charles. Yeah, but, I mean, but, it doesn't look like it. But look at how he's moving. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, possibility. Now, who knows who's going to be there, um, of course, when you draft, because the draft is a fluid situation. But, again, this is one of those ones that has a, uh, a Stephen Jones all over it because of the position flex and could actually fill a role. So, we'll see what happens. We'll start looking at some of the different prospects as we get ready for the draft. Now, here's where life gets to be interesting. Um, it's funny how um, I get accused of a lot of different things. Um, and people make assumptions and things. And when you talk about things, that, you know, understand, you, you listen to guys like Mel Kuyper Jr. and things like that. They're going to tell you the mock draft and how great this guy is. You know, like, say, Josh Rosen, how Josh Rosen was going to be incredible. And Josh, Ro yeah, okay, well, it didn't work out that way. Um, nobody really knows because the NFL is like a crapshoot, okay? You're gambling. You got about a 50-50 chance of uh, succeeding. Do you think if San Francisco thought that um, – 
Trey Lance was going to play the way he would, that they would have spent three number ones in a second to move up to get him? No. But you're gambling and taking a risk and hoping that you get lightning in a bottle. Part of the thing with Dak Prescott is I look and I've been around long enough. I always say I'm old, and I don't say I'm old to be a derogatory term. I say I'm old because I've experienced and I've seen a lot of different things, okay? And I know what it has been like being in quarterback purgatory for the Cowboys, where we just kept trying to throw anybody against the wall and see if they stuck after Troy Aikman. And we're blessed. And let me say this again to Dak Prescott fans, to Tony Romo fans, and ones that can't stand Dak and Dak don't like Tony Romo. The Cowboys were very fortunate and lucky to get in and get Tony Romo and Tony Romo to play the way he did. Us not winning Super Bowls was not Tony Romo's fault. just wasn't. We had good defenses at times, and we had some hiccups along the way and stuff. But you got to be perfect to win a Super Bowl. We've seen teams that have gone through the last two years that were probably the best teams in football in the terms of personnel not, may, not win the Super Bowl. San Francisco and the Eagles. It's not enough just to have great personnel. You've got to be loaded everywhere. You've got to play perfect. You've got to have you know, the ball bounce the right way for you. There's so many variables. It's just un, 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 unbelievable the odds of winning that Super Bowl. The reason I always say about Dak Prescott is, is I see how he's playing, and quarterbacks like that are few and far between. We've seen so many of these quarterbacks that are drafted in, in it's a crapshoot and what people have had to give up to get them. The funny thing is, is where we are with Dak Prescott, oh man, Chris Canty literally said exactly. When you watch this clip, this is from uh, four years ago. This, it's literally the exact same conversation from four years ago as it is now. I want you to listen to this because the reason I say, had we done what the experts said we should do back then, that we should have gotten one of those quarterbacks, you know, moved up, moved up from where we were instead of drafting Micah Parsons and traded a couple of number ones down the road, We wouldn't have Micah Parsons and CeeDee Lamb and all this, that, and the other. And we may have actually had, say, Zach Wilson, or we would have spent three number ones for, like, Trey Lance. Let's listen here, because this is uncanny. And obviously, that would be a huge shakeup if something like that were to happen with the Cowboys. Yeah, it would be. And to Dan's point, I think what he's saying is Dak's not elite. Deshaun Watson is elite. But sometimes you got to pay the really good 100%. ones that aren't elite that kind of money that they need. And in this division, guys, if you're not going to go forward that. Let me ask right now. Deshaun Watson had an incredible last year with the Texans, be it a team that was 4-12. and 12. You heard that. Dak Prescott's not an elite quarterback like Deshaun Watson. What if the Cowboys had traded for Deshaun Watson, who's got, I believe, 14 TDs over the last two seasons? Dak, if you, if you do, I'm say if you do go forward with Dak first, you're ahead of the game. You got the Giants. Is Daniel Jones the right guy? They're hoping he is. The Eagles, maybe Jalen Hurts, maybe not. Washington doesn't know who their quarterback will be. If Dak's your Still guy bad. and you're moving forward with him, you're ahead of the game in that division by miles. So uh, unless Daniel Jones, you know, keeps improving and closes that gap, so I'm with Dan on him not being elite. But sometimes you got to pay these guys like they are elite. We've seen that with numerous quarterbacks in the NFL. So sometimes you just got to do it, even though you may know he's not special and not one of the top two, three, four quarterbacks in the league. You know, maybe circumstance dictate you got to keep him and you got to overpay him. Further, Mel, let me just throw this back. Hold on a second, Dan, because Ed Werder came on this show the other day and said, regardless of trading him, if the Cowboys don't get a long-term deal done with Dak, they would be negligent if they don't take a quarterback at number 10, where they currently sit. Now, you don't have any of the five still sitting Mm -hmm. there, but why do you think of that? If they don't get a deal done with Dak, but he's on the tag, should the Cowboys take a quarterback? 
I don't think one will be there, Greeny. I think you have to move up. You would be at 10, and you would be on that fringe of maybe being able to go up two, three, four spots to get that quarterback. Problem you run into here is it's going to be you're going to give up some draft choice to go up and get that guy, mm -hmm. and you're still not sure if he will be what Dak Prescott already is. You just don't know. Uh, you hope. That a Justin Fields and a Trey Lance and a Mac Jones will be really good, but you don't know. We know what Dak is. And I understand he's not super. Let, let's go through here. Let's think about that. You don't know what a Zach Wilson or a Trey Lance or Justin Fields would be. And you don't know what this team would be without Micah. And of course, anybody else. Elite or elite, but he's a really good quarterback. And like I say, and in that division, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. That's going to put you ahead. That's going to make you the favorite to win that division. I also think offensive lines in need area. Rayshon Slater from Northwestern, Elijah Vera Tucker from USC would make sense. The cornerback, whether if it's not Sertan from Alabama, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. So I would rather use that pick on either a corner or an offensive lineman and have Dak as my quarterback then move Dak or do something with Dak there and have to try to figure out which quarterback do I like and which young quarterback I'm moving forward with, uh, that would be a dangerous situation to put yourself in. Diana Rossini, help me. If, if the Cowboys don't get the long-term deal worked out with Dak and there is no reason to believe they will based on what has happened, how should we expect that to play out? They're going to have to figure out who's going to play the quarterback position. They're going to have to do that. <laughs> and in terms of what they're thinking now, the thought process when I was talking to sources with Dallas just two days ago was that they're going to be able to work this out either way, whether it's the tag or the long-term deal. The conversations I was having was more about what they're going to do with that 10th pick, and it's more in the direction of what Mel was just talking about with the offensive line, which, you know, you think about Dallas, we don't talk about them needing an offensive line. Uh, it's been a while. Because uh, they've always been so great there, but we saw so many injuries last year. So in terms of the organization, the sense I'm getting from those that are working in scouting and in coaching right now, it's that this is going to get hammered out. Canty, what do you think? I, I don't think it's going to happen. This. I mean, here's the thing. We're talking about this Listen negotiation. This. It really isn't a negotiation. This is a stick-up by Dak Prescott because he has so much leverage. It's no it's... gun, no mask. Put the money in the bag. At this point, why would Dak settle for a deal that's below <laughs> market when he's only one season away from true free agency in the market being able to command over $40 million a year? It doesn't make sense for Dak Prescott to settle for a team-friendly deal. If Jerry Jones wanted something like that, he would have done it a couple of seasons ago. Just last week the San Diego Padres paid Fernando Tatis Jr. four years before they had to and gave him 340 million dollars. Do you know why? Because it gave them the flexibility to be able to spread that hit of their payroll over 14 years. If the Cowboys were so concerned with the structure in the salary cap, they would have done this deal years ago. Dan Is that not exactly the same thing that we are hearing right now? Is that not the, uh, uh, verbatim? It's highway robbery, you know, but the, the, no gun, no mask. Just put the money in the bag. And, of course, he still hated Dak back then. Well, baseball doesn't have a salary cap, so that's why Tatis can you, they can pay him whatever you want. I, I'm not saying Dak Prescott should, should play for $20 million. Do I think that Dak can look? Because here's the thing. Chris, you know this. You go into the NFL as a young player with one goal. Get to a second contract. Now that second contract is going to always be different for guys. We know that's going to happen for Dak Prescott. He has earned a ton of money. So now the question is, does Dak just want to get a ton of money? Like, that's it? Because once you, as a good quarterback, take a ton of money from your football team, team success. It's never happened in the NFL. So Dak can ask himself, maybe I will take less than what the market demands, but still get a ton of money and go, what Patrick did. Another offensive lineman. Go get us a better defense. That's what I'm saying. You're a good player. Take a really good contract, not the greatest that you can, so you can win a ton of games. Because the last three years, you're 29 and 25 as a football team. I, I'm being told that, there was, that someone has tweeted, I, I can't. Having a little, oh, it's Tad Prescott. Oh, Tad Prescott has <laughs> tweeted, and that is Dak's brother, 
Um, mm. Dan Orlovsky saying he's been correct about Dak. Bro, what's your stand on Dak? You badmouthed him for years in favor of your boy Wentz and then favored Dak over Wentz. I have proof. Today you're back to your old ways. Just make up your mind already. Uh, Dad, Tad Prescott has responded to things on our show multiple times. Go ahead, Dan. What? I've never badmouthed Dak Prescott. Oh, I literally said since day one, he's a good player. That's not badmouthing the guy. I've said he's a remarkable dude. Everything I hear about him is he's a great leader. But my job is to be as honest as what my eyes tell me to be. He's not you great. Need he's not elite. No, he's good. The second thing is I've never flip-flopped. I've never flip-flopped. I think Carson Wentz is a more talented player. I think he's, he's a guy that has, one, been in the MVP conversation. Dak has not that late in the season. Two, he's carried a depleted roster. Dak has not. Those are facts. And I don't know if Dominique Foxworth or Marcus Spears wrote that tweet for Tad, but the reality is I've never bad melt him. I think he's a good player. I just don't think he should be the highest paid quarterback in football. Thank you for watching. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to have to cut that up and save some of that. that. That's gold. Everything that we are hearing right now today is all stuff we've heard. Okay? Listen, the Cowboys, they don't sign people in free agency. They get killed every offseason. So that's where I'm trying to. You know, let's see what happens. I can't change the Cowboys not doing anything. I'm going to talk about it. And the thing about situations, hindsight is twenty twenty. We all look at things in life and say, this is the right path. And then we realize, damn, that was stupid. That was really stupid. Why did I do that? And your perception changes. So, you know, you may look and say, this would be a great guy to sign. And then they get there, they get injured, or it doesn't work out. And then you realize, hey, I screwed up. I got it wrong. Now that we have more information, it's time to reevaluate where you are. But we have been in this situation before. And you honestly can't say, had we gotten rid of Dak or not signed him before that after having three seasons of 12 and five, we've done pretty good. And you can look at those teams that drafted quarterbacks with the exception of San Francisco. They were fortunate enough that they found their guy on their loaded roster. Most of them did not do great with the people that they had. So hindsight is twenty twenty. And we'll see what happens between now and, you know, the end of next season if Dak Prescott gets a deal or doesn't get a deal. One thing I can guarantee you of is it will be talked about a lot. And Dak Prescott, he will be okay one way or the other. All right, good people. Hopefully I'll see you guys. We will do our live stream at 5 o'clock. It is, uh, of course, Easter Sunday. Uh, so I don't know if anybody's going to join in or not. But if you are, uh, have some time and things, we will be doing our live stream as we start counting down to the NFL draft. I will see you later. Peace.